Blender 4.3 is finally here and in this video I'm going to show you the updates on the sculpting brushes in Blender 4.3. So as you can see this is their new picture for Blender 4.3. So first of all to sculpt on to show you the new sculpting brushes I'm going to use a UV, UV sphere for this as that's the best that's my favorite primitive shape. I'm going to first of all shade this move and right click and then subdivide this a few times. So now, what are we going to do? When you go to his, um, new, the sculpting workspace, and when, when I go to the sculpting workspace, you're going to see some different changes in the viewport. As you can see, the default viewport, in the layout viewport, everything looks the same, everything is the same. But in the sculpting viewport, the, work, the viewport is going to be a bit different. So I'm going to go there right now. Three, two, one. So as you can see, the tools panel is gone. They only have these types to do the masking, this the box mask is masking tools but now the brushes the sculpting brushes are down here as you can see it is in an asset library okay it is now an asset library the sculpting brushes are an asset library what that means is that you can um up um move it from file to file export it import it whatever you want to do with them okay so i'm going to look at the new ones as you can see that if you hover over those brushes you can see their name and what they do so for example you know, already know the blob it magnifies the mesh as you draw such like that so i'm going to look at the new ones so the first thing i would obviously do is going to smooth this out so remember the basics f to um increase the scope and um, the brush size and i'm going to smooth it out and guys, if you want to watch my other video about sculpting, the basics of sculpting, you should watch that out. The link is going to be in the description. So now we have that. What now we're going to do, we're now going to look at the brushes. So the one that I really, really, really liked was that you can actually see a clear difference between the crease polish and the crease sharp. The, the normal crease polish, I think, is gone. Now we have a crease sharp and a crease polish. So now if you look at our crease polish, if you sculpt on this, and remember, I'm going to turn on dynamic topology. Scale, I'm going to scale this down. F, scale it down. I'm going to go to crease polish. You're going to see the difference. So as you can see, in our crease polish, can't really see anything. As you can see, now you can see it. I'm going to change it to matte cap. So over here, in matte cap, change it to, let's say, this one. You can't see this one. Over here, I think this one should be good. So remember, if you cannot see it, change the matte cap. So now if you do this, you can see that it's polished look. This is crease polish, how that looks. And now if I do the crease sharp, it will look something like, it's going to be more sharp. It's going to dig in more. As you can see, it's going to dig in more into the sculpt. And this is our crease polish. Very, very smooth, very subtle. Crease polish in the other, other hand just digs in. It's very like sharp, digs in, okay? And now we also have the draw brush that is normal. You can draw stuff. And but then we have draw sharp. We have this is a new one, draw sharp. So it draws, but it's gonna be like subtracting. Like sh subtract. This is draw sharp, which is subtracts, subtracts um geometry. This is add geometry, okay? And then we have an inflate and deflate brush. So inflate and deflate basically inflates, and then if you do shift, it deflates, okay. And then we have a layer. It adds a layer to your mesh. So as you can see, it adds a layer. That actually, I think layers is very, very good. For example, if I write um, B, that looks like a B, right? That looks cool. Or if I, if I write for you guys to subscribe, I write S, U, B. You should subscribe to this channel. I post every week, daily. So you should watch my and subscribe. I'm really hitting 200 or maybe 1 million by the time you're watching this video. And now we have a fill and deepen. So what this does, it fills. It fills gaps. So this is my this is my favorite one. For example, if I go over here, it literally fills in your crease. That is so cool. Fills it in. That is actually wild. Fill this in as well. As you can see, we have some gaps over here. Fill this in. Fill this in. And let's fill this in as well. As you can see, it fills in those gaps. Okay, it fills in those gaps. And now we have a flatten to show the contrast. For example, if I quickly increase this, flatten, it will flatten the sides. As you can see, they flatten the side. That's a new one as well. Flatten them up. And then we have a plateau. 
it says it says now this one it says similar to flatten but with a locked orientation and depth to create a consistently flat surface so it's going to be a consistent so if i do this now it's going to be consistent it's going to be the same depth same surface it's going to be consistent okay that is what plateau I mean if i'm pronouncing i think it's a french word it should be a french word now it says scrape multiplane now this one i don't think we can do this one over here it's scraping multiplane so like I think it does is that let's see what it does. It says scrapes the mesh with two right angle planes at the same time, representing a sharp edge between them. So it creates a sharp edge between them. So for this one, we do not have any like edges to create sharp edges between them, but you know you can test them out and do what you want. Now we also have your elastic grab. I think this is a new one. Elastic grab, grab it, move it. This is elastic snake. This is the new one for the snake. It's elastic snake group. So I don't really like this one, but you know, I saw the new version of the snake hook. I took, I looked at the snake hook. It's so good. They updated the snake hook. As you can see, it goes a bit more further. And the geometry is actually very, very, very consistent and perfect. In the other one, the snake hook in 4.2 and 4.1, the snake hook used to break, used to crash, and usually, usually didn't work properly. So now it looks at that. It literally works perfect. That, that's probably my second favorite. My first favorite is probably the fill one. It looks cool. I'm going to join this together. Look at that. Create a cool shape right there. You have the thumb. Let's see what that does. Probably going to create a thumb. Or you can drag it and you can see it creates that type of um, layer on top of it. And then you have the masking tools and you can test these out as well. And those are like the top changes they have done in the sculpting brush. Okay, that is actually the same, and the settings are the same. The ultra smooth, the hardness, the normal radius, the size, the strength, all of that stuff. This viewport is the same, this is the same, but the only thing they changed, they've added some new um, sculpting brushes and they added this asset library that you can move, uh, move, import some sculpting brushes to other Blender Fast Blender 4.2, 4.1 if you used, if you like the other um earlier versions of blender so i hope you enjoyed this video do not forget to like the video subscribe and i'll see you in my next video